<laughs> Previously on the Blockbuster Buster. Oh, you're still here. What are you expecting? Erod to reappear and defeat me? Well, um, he's not coming back. <laughs> That was for you, Pinhead. The Trinity of Sonders. All right, say goodnight, Gracie. Klaatu verada next time. Ash, honey, I think you said the words wrong. All oh, right, so I didn't say every little syllable, but I said them. Never mind that now. We have to find somebody else to do today's review. Um, I think I might know a guy. Hello? Ha! Diggity! In a world of uncertainty, where movie theaters are plagued by remakes and sequels, in a world where big budget movies can still suck, in this world we have the Blockbuster Buster. <laughs> Fedora Freddy here to give you the inside scoop of a popular zombie picture, Resident Evil. Now during the pre-pro, the producers had the silly notion of getting acclaimed zombie picture maker George A. Romero to write and direct this picture. Well scat diddly bop, are we in this business to tell stories or to make a million simoleons? The answer is the latter. Enter Paul Anderson, whose only successful picture was Mortal Kombat, and if he can turn one video game movie into a runaway hit, he can sure as hell do it twice. Now it's essential that we keep such a surefire talent at the helm. So if he wants to make radical changes to the story like omitting the two main characters from the video game series and replacing them for a made-up character that he wrote for his girlfriend to play, then it's okay. I'm sure the kids won't mind trading in well-trained soldier types for a good-looking dame in a mini dress. Now let's see, everybody and their mom who has played this game knows exactly how the story begins. Now we gotta think of a clever way to distract the audience so they won't notice all the changes that Anderson has made to the script. I got it! Good old reliable GNJ! Gratuitous new Jovovich! Now those poor bastards who have never played the game probably have questions out the wazoo. Relax pal, you're not gonna get Jimmy Jack. Cause Anderson cleverly gave his gal pal convenient amnesia, so she will ask all the characters around her the daffy questions that any bumbling boo who doesn't belong in this kind of story would ask. Listen to me. I want to know who you people are, and I want to know what's going on here. So what have we got so far? A deadly virus on the loose and a secret lab under a mansion. Soldiers show up to investigate and they shanghai everybody who lives in the mansion to go along with them on their mission. Good golly gee willikers, the questions are rising faster than a raquette's leg at a can can contest. What we need here is to distract the audience yet again, with one of those fast paced sequences shot in... ACTION SCOPE! Chim Chim Shuru, that was more exciting than Edward D. Robinson with a flamethrower. Now, if you're under the dopey notion that Anderson didn't write in any conflict to keep these personality-stricken characters busy, then are you in for a wobble? Turns out that the civvies and the rest of the soldiers need to get to the secret room so they can shut down the queer contraption that trapped all the scientists. Now Soldier Boy here has a choice on who to take with him. He can either take one of his army buddies or one of the civvies to help him carry the dingus. So who do you think he should take? The supermodel, of course! Aesthetics over quality, that's what I always say. So 30 minutes into the picture, the machine shuts off, the doors open, and the zombies make their first appearance. Now that I think about it, in the game, the first zombie shows up almost right after the first cutscene. And in all the Romero pictures, they show up right away. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Well, who am I to question the director who turned the only adaptation that he ever directed into a real humdinger? Now that we have flesh-eating ghouls on the loose, I think it's a good time for Mr. Anderson to introduce something fairly modern to this picture called a plot twist. That's right, gals and pals, Kung Fu Jovovich is actually a triple agent. She's secretly the guardian of the lab, who lives in the mansion, all the while she was in cahoots with a spy that was going to steal the zombie-making virus and sell it in the black market, but she was also secretly going to steal the virus for herself and give it to the Freedom Fighters. Now, if any of this shtick made you go cross-eyed and you're still thinking about making your own moving pictures, take it from Fredo Freddy. Don't quit your day job. With dozens of man-eating fiends on their tails, the Scooby Gang needs to get a hold of the zombie antivirus and get out of there faster than the Roadrunner on Sugar Rush. When I get out of here... I think I'm gonna get laid. Alright, it's time for Anderson to put the er in urgent by revealing yet another modern plot twist as the computer majig releases a giant atomic monster. Unfortunately, our boys at the special effects lab couldn't produce a better effect for the creature portion of this feature. 
So it's time once again to distract the audience with yet another plot twist. Yup, we barely got to know Johnny Handsome over here and he turns out to be a bad guy. And if you saw that coming, then you should be making your own moving pictures. Special effects eat the bad guy while the supermodel and her super friends escape on the train. Now I have a note here from Mr. E saying that this scene actually doesn't happen until the second game. Well, Anderson wasn't really following the first game, so I'm sure the kids won't mind if he borrows elements from all the games, especially since this next scene is shot in... ACTION SCOPE! CVs escape into the mansion, and then this, and this, and this happens. Son of a biscuit eater, we have to distract the audience yet again from all the confusion. G and J? Gratuitous new Jovo bitch. Oh yeah. I know you confused Palookas have a lot of questions, but Paul Anderson doesn't have to explain a damn thing. Somebody else will explain it in the sequel. Well, it says here that Mr. E wants me to destroy this picture with extreme prejudice, and if Fedora Freddy's anything, he's a team player. Oh, why, hello, DB. What? They're remaking Footloose. I know exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna remake Flashdance, and we're gonna cast Selena Gomez in the main part. I'm glad you like it. I'm 30 minutes away, I'll be there in 10. Well, that didn't go so well. Sorry, guys. I really thought he was gonna review the movie. By the way, Ash, where did you send Eva Lee? Beats me. At least you won't bother us anymore. Dump! Damn it! Back in the null void. Check out my website, suckers! <laughs> <laughs>